And here we go. How anticlimactic. Well, friends, Jason over at Fireball Tool made this awesome vise. It opens like 16 inches and it has clamping force of almost 20,000 pounds. It's incredible. I'm going to make my own rendition. Somehow, somewhere, he was able to find two and a half by four and a half rectangular tubing that this would slide into. I was not able to find that, so I'm going to have to make it myself. And what I've got here is some four by six tubing. I'm going to quarter it and shrink it down. While I'm at it, I need to remove this weld line down there, so that's part of what I'll cut out. Since I know that's in line with the length of the tube, I'm just going to use that as my cut guide. Now this project is further proof that you can never tell what you're going to find on this channel, but if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. Here I'm scribing a line to match the two halves together so I get the perfect fit. Now that adjusted the height fairly well and it could stand to be tightened up a little bit, but I think I'm going to wait until I adjust the width also. To get a nice tight fit, we'll clamp, clamp the sides onto the side of the 2x4 and then we'll scribe a line. And if we grind up to that line, then we'll get our nice tight fit. Alright, there it's quartered, it's fitted together. I have it clamped to the table and to the tube to have a nice square fit, nice and tight. I'll come in, put a bunch of tacks on it, and then weld it up. Okay, so that's looking good. Nice good fit. Now that we've got the body and the dynamic jaw built, we need a way to move the dynamic jaw in and out of the body. And uh, that will be with this lead screw. And I've got these thrust bearings I'm going to use, and I need a way to hold those. And the way we'll do that is to bore a couple holes in this 3 8 plate to hold the bearings in place. And we'll sandwich three pieces of this together to make our screw drive. Now I've got my three layers and the first two layers slide right into that perfectly. I want them all centered. I'm going to tack them together and then drill the center hole through all of them at once. That way I'm sure that the center hole will be the same for all of them. And yeah, I could have used a milling machine for that, but as always, I like to show you guys ways where you don't need milling machines and things like that. All right, well, there's my thrust bearings in there. Small pass-through hole in the middle. So what we'll do now is we'll plug weld the end of that, and this will be our drive nut. Now we'll drill some holes into the body of our dynamic jaw and we'll use those to plug weld that bearing assembly into the body there. I've got my lead screw in there. Got a little washer on the end to center it. I need to weld the tube into the end there, and we'll use all this as an alignment fixture. So 
So here's our lead screw in the dynamic jaw. Now we need to create the nut that it threads into. And that is going to be inside this tube and we're going to make it from these two nuts. And you know I don't like using machine tools unless I absolutely have to, so what we're going to do is we're going to roll this back and forth and grind it with the angle grinder until it fits inside there. Now we'll put some plug welds in there and draw a fillet weld around the whole top edge. Now you can see the, the joint is right in the middle of the plug weld area and we still got our nice smooth action. We'll just weld that in. I wanted to get on to making the speed wrench for the handle and the way I decided to do that was first bore the largest hole I could that was as close to the uh, nut size. Then I decided to file it out to that hexagon shape and I don't mind telling you this took me almost an hour so the second hole I'm going to use the uh, jigsaw and see how that works. So in about five minutes I got as far as what the file did in an hour. I still need to file it a little bit, but the amount of filing now is much less than I had before. Okay, there's my dual range wrench. All I need to do is drill and tap that hole. I have here a 5 16 bolt that I rounded off in the same way that I did this threaded inserts. I took a piece of aluminum bar and bored it out and I'll leave a link up in the corner to how I did that. This will be my spinner handle and we'll just put that in and we'll have our handle done. All right, that is looking good. Yes. Next step is to install this, then build the jaws. So now we need to make the jaws. And the way Jason did it over at Fireball Tool was he used the water jet to cut out all the plates and then weld them on to the vice body. Um, I don't have a water jet, so we'll be using the porta band for that. Now, if you've been with the channel a while, you know I'm a pretty big fan of using CAD, computer-aided design. Well, this is a different kind of CAD I learned from Ben Nelson. I'll leave a link to his channel up in the corner there. This is cardboard-aided design. <laughs> so we'll just lay these templates on a piece of steel and cut them out on the porta band. Now the bandsaw got it pretty close, but what I like to do is stack the two pieces together and then grind the edges to match so you have a perfect mirror image. So I've got this all fitted together, clamped in place. I'll tack it all, get the clamps off, and weld it all. Now this here is a special deep socket that I made for the purpose of securing these jam nuts all the way down on the end of that rod because I definitely want to be able to remove this. We've got our thrust bearing with some lubrication on it. I've got my deep socket there.
Okay, now we'll install our threaded nut. All right, now to get this alignment right, we're going to bring this through. We're going to tack that first, then weld it all the way around. Then we're going to pull the dynamic jaw away, pulling that in. And I've left a bevel there, and then we'll just put, put a weld right around the end of that bead. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to Jason over at Fireball Tool for providing the inspiration for this project. The fact of the matter is I practically copied the one that he built, and two-thirds of the way into the project I found out he was selling the plans for the thing anyway. So I didn't buy Jason's plans, but I did buy his clamps. Try these things. You'll love them. I'll leave a purchase link in the doobly-doo below. Well here it is, and I'm pretty happy with it. All I gotta do now is paint it and make some soft jaws for it. And if you wanna see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. But let me tell you a little bit about it. Jason's vise opened to 16 inches, this opens to 10. I'm good with that. I think Jason's vise used an eight thread per inch screw. This uses a 10 thread per inch screw. And uh, I am really happy with the action that I get on this. I think what I'm going to do at this point is take the sundial pedestal vise, and I'll leave a link to that up here, and this will be the new vise for the top of the sundial. So that's all for this time. I'll leave links to the commonly available parts I used in doobly-doo below. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something in mind that YouTube thinks you'll like, and have a good one.